Hi everyone and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at one of the key skills required when we're dealing with fractions and that is to find the fraction of an amount. There are several ways of doing this but I like to use what I call my golden rule and it is a simple two-step process. If you follow it you will be able to find any fraction of any amount. I hope it helps. <laughs> We're going to do is have a look at the methods and run through a couple of examples and then we'll take a look at a couple of typical exam type questions. So finding the fraction of an amount. The example I'm going to use to start with is if we are looking for three quarters of 80. Now I did say I was going to use a two-step rule. So the first thing we do, step one. We take the amount and we divide it by the bottom number. In this case, it will be 80 divided by 4 equals 20. Now, what we've done here, because in this example we are dealing in quarters, if we divide 80 by 4, we have found one quarter. So one quarter of 80 is 20. Then we go back to the fraction and look at the top number. We're not being asked to find one quarter. We're being asked to find three quarters. Therefore, we take our answer and we multiply it by the top number. 20 times 3 is 60. So three quarters of 80 is 60. Let's have a look at again with another example. So this time I will use two fifths of 60. Again, step one, divide by the bottom. 60 divided by five equals 12. And again, because this fraction is in fifths, if we divide 60, into fives then we have found one fifth so 12 is one fifth of 60 but we don't want one fifth we want two of them so the second step multiply by the top and we have the answer 24 so step one divide by the bottom Step two, multiply by the top. I call this my golden rule because it works for any fraction of any amount. And the other reason I love this method, and there are others to be had, is because I know I can also use exactly the same method when I move on to percentages. We're not going to cover that here. That's in one of my other videos. But uh, what we are going to do now is look at a couple of questions. Let's have a look at how this might work. Here's a question. George sees a jacket for sale for £120. He has a voucher for one third off. And the question is asking us how much will he have to pay? Right, I want to have a look at solving this question in two different ways. First of all, let's have a look at how much he is saving. The original price is 120 but George has a voucher for one third. So if we look at one third of 120, all we have to do, following the golden rule, 120 divided by three. So 120 divided by three is 40. Now, if we take that 40 and multiply by the top, well, in this case, the top is only a one. So 40 times 1 is 40. We don't have to do that. Now, what we found there is how much he is going to save. So if he is saving 40 and the original price was 120, then 120 take away the 40 that he's going to save with his voucher and he will pay 80 pounds. Now, another way of looking at this question 
is if you were to consider that he's going to take one third off, then that means he's actually going to have to pay the other two thirds because of course one third and two thirds is a whole one. So in this case, we will be looking to find two thirds of 120. So follow the golden rule again, 120 divided by three. So that's the same question as on the left hand side, 120 divided by three equals 40. But he's not paying one third, he's paying two thirds. So let's follow the second part of the two step rule. And we are going to multiply that by two and 40 times two equals 80. So to summarize, we can either find out what one third is, which is what it says on his voucher, and we can take that one third away from the total amount. Or if he's going to save one third, that means he's going to have to pay the other two thirds. So we can find two thirds of 120. And of course, the answer is the same. Another question here, Alec is buying a car. The total cost is 4,800. He agrees to pay one quarter of the amount as a deposit. So the questions were being asked is how much will he pay as their deposit and how much is there left to pay? So one quarter of the amount we simply write as one quarter of 4,800. So again, I'm never going to move away from my golden rule. Step one, divide by four. 4,800 divided by 4, 4,800 divided by 4 equals 1,200. Step 2, multiply it by the top. It's a 1, so 1,200, 1,200 pounds will be the deposit. Now again, how much is there left to pay? Well, one way we can do this is 4,800 minus the deposit of £1,200, that must mean that there is £3,600 left to pay. Or you could have worked out that if the total price is £4,800 and he has paid one quarter, that means he will have the other three quarters left to pay. So we could do it by finding three quarters of 4,800. So again, 4,800 divided by four is exactly the same as we did on the other side, is 1,200. But this time we are looking for three quarters. So now we are going to multiply that by three. So 1,200 times three is 3,600. And of course, we've come to the same answer. And it really doesn't matter which way around you do it. A quick summary then before I mention one other little important point. If we are looking for a fraction, three sevenths of an amount, 56. Two step rule, step one, divide by the bottom. Take your answer. Step two, multiply by the top. It will never let you down. Now, there's one other little important thing that I want to have a look at that I see students get wrong so many times. I've written the same thing down here twice. Two thirds of 90, two thirds of 90. This is where it becomes really important that you read the question carefully. Because if I come down to this bottom one and I simply add another F, we now have the situation where on the top we are being asked to find two thirds of 90. So we would go 90 divided by three and then 
multiplied by 2. So 90 divided by 3 is 30. 30 times 2 is 60. So 60 is 2 thirds of 90. But of course this extra little f here means 2 thirds off 90. Therefore once you've found your 2 thirds at the top here, the second one is asking you to take it away. So one little letter, completely different solution. One to be careful of. And that for me is the most straightforward way to find the fraction of an amount. There are other ways fractions can be turned into decimals and percentages. But for me, sticking to that two step rule means I will never go wrong. I hope that's been useful. As always, if it has, please hit the subscribe button. That helps you find some of the other videos in my channel. Hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you.